So Dave, we're here at Star Sound Studios just outside of Cleveland, Ohio. We're gonna go talk to Wade Nichols. All right, we're here today with Wade Nichols at Star Sound Studios. Thanks so much for having us great. here. Yeah, it's so good to see you again. Yeah. And uh, man, this is uh, my third trip here. And uh, yeah, that's it right. started all the way back in, in 2015. 15, yeah, and, eight years. Right, and this room was totally different at that point. Like yes. It, it was yes. uh, a drum set was where we were at and a riser with lights everywhere. And yes. It was kind of like the live room section. You had a little bit of a control room. That was the, my band. Yeah, yeah. And then you had a little bit of control room back there in the back, um, but it's evolved over over time. And uh, tell me a little yeah. bit about your background and like how you uh, got to own this studio and um, all that. It was always like for my band. Yeah. Like, um, I just wanted to sound. I wanted the band to sound better. I wanted it, you know, for live when we were playing and stuff. And um, we got it to evolve to all electronic, so there was absolutely no stage volume. We had 63 lights, lasers, fog, you know, the pyro fog, you know, it was, it was pretty cool. And I was always going to um, Gear Fest, which you've attended and, yeah. and taught at, and I've been in your master class. And um, it just, I was always seeking to, to for that to sound better. And then all of a sudden I was doing, plus I was doing other people's stuff. And all of a sudden, you know, you, uh, Mark, Fab, all these guys that I've met at GearFest along the way, they're like, wow, this sounds great. And I'm going, well, maybe I should do that. <laughs> yeah. How long ago did you start the studio? Uh, 93, actually. 93, wow. All yeah, right. but it's been in a bunch of different areas. I, it was in Milwaukee for when I lived there for like nine years. It was in my basement. Mm -hmm. And I built a whole studio there. And then um, it's been in several commercial spots here in Cleveland, and then I finally landed here. All right, come on in. Show us around, Wade. Yeah, yeah. This is the new drum room. Yeah. Because um, now with the new Dolby, um, I turned this whole side into Studio A. Yep. And I had to figure out a way for the drummer to actually face the band. So over here, where it used to be Studio C, that's now where everybody stands in place. And so we have guitar, guitar, bass in the middle, lead singer, and then keyboard station if somebody has one. Do you record a lot of uh, live bands all at once? Uh, if, if I have a band, and I mean, it's not a ton of it, mm -hmm. but if I have a band, it's all at once. Yeah. And then <clears throat> the, the actual speakers are in the other room um, in cabinets, mm -hmm. but the f foot pedals are there and then it kind of comes and runs through. You know, you work with a lot of different types of clients. Like, uh, do mm -hmm. you have certain genres that you, you typically focus no, on? It, um, no, because like I developed a plan of how to, you know, my template. And then if I just follow like basic steps, how they sound just naturally comes through you know mm -hmm. so if it's i've done gospel bluegrass mm -hmm. rap rock metal i just finished a metal album yeah um so it doesn't really matter that's awesome um with uh, the, the the clients you work with are they mostly around the cleveland area that they're from yes or it, i had one client come from it's either north or south carolina i can't remember mm -hmm. and his daughter was 13. Mm -hmm. Um, and on the autistic spectrum. Sure. So, I mean, you know, she's singing the song and we're like, oh, so, you know, what do you think about it? She was grasshopper, you know what I mean? Or butterfly, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You no, know, it was interesting. And it's, he keeps sending me her evolution. And um, so that turned out really cool. And they want to come back. Wow. So, and I mean, the impact that, you know, what you do, how that affects everybody else's yeah. lives. And I, I just know you personally and how much care you put into it yes. um, because uh, you know there's there's certain people that will, will churn out mixes and just like I got to move on to the next thing you seem to just take so much care with with every project and you don't you don't stop until it's, it's perfect. no yeah, yeah you have to kind of know the people to, because you, yeah yeah you can set levels and buy but that doesn't 
that doesn't pass muster. Right. Because my art comes out better when I know the people that I, you know, and so I built like packages that it, it where the time is enough where you get to know the person well enough, you know. Yeah. I think it's it's important in any industry to know your clients and know who you're working with because um, like that I, we do the same thing like we set up discovery calls we get to know what their hopes and dreams are and like uh, that that feeds into the end product here's where the amps are so like the Marshall um, Mesa boogie rig and then the amp egg for bass and then each of them has their own secret ignore the man behind a curtain <laughs> and <clears throat> so they all have their own dynamounts. Nice. So I can, in sitting in the sweet spot, I can move yeah. the speaker in real time, which is cool. That's the focal booth. Yeah. So, you know, I want to talk a little bit about how you wanted to convert this room to Atmos. And, uh, right. you know, there, it's the big industry thing right now. A lot of people are yeah. wanting to move to Dolby yeah. Atmos and uh, spatial audio. And so what was that for you like? One of my friends said, you know, he's like, dude, you're always like way ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, this is where music's going. You know, whether people have it or not, you know, that was the thought behind it really. And then it's like, okay, how do you go about doing that? Yeah. You know, I called you, wait a minute, you know. <laughs> and of course we had to change um, design, what, 3,465 times or <laughs> No, it wasn't that bad. No, it, it, I will say that, uh, you know, the nice thing was is that I had been here before, so I already had physical measurements of the room. I, I uh, had some acoustical models that I had uh, built from, from previously. Now, obviously, before the mixed position was on the old, whole other side of the room, yeah, firing yeah. a different direction. Yes. And so this uh, do, going to Dolby yeah, Atmos right. is, a, is a, different, a different animal. But um, yeah, the room is set up really nicely for it because you, you have a lot of space and you're able to have an equidistant set up with your yes. speakers. Yeah. And uh, you know, we wanted to too. Uh, we wanted to, to use a lot of the products that you already had. You know, like because uh, right. you know, obviously, upgrading to a Dolby Atmos setup, there's a lot of expense to that. And and uh, you had some good materials, like some foundational building blocks of these, you know, four inch thick acoustical panels that you, <laughs> you already had. Right. You had a lot of uh, um, T fusers from Orlex that we repurposed yes. as well. Yes. Uh, we did some things with the the front wall here with the right. the image that's all printed on fabric and there's a huge base trap behind it um, and and then we we also did a few things in the ceiling but um, for the most part it, it was getting the setup right getting the treatment placed and and so that you could hear things accurately yeah well and that's what I appreciated too because you know why would you throw all this out yeah. and then start over you know and that was kind of the goal I think I had to buy six T fusers and the material to do the um, base trap, and that yeah. was it. And then I added extra cost by printing on it, <laughs> but I think it, that's my own, you know, I just didn't want a white wall of it. It's like, what are you doing, surgery or, you know? <laughs> so, and then Studio A's in here. And yeah, this used to be the old drum room, if you remember. I do. When you were here. I do, yeah. So then now this is uh, Studio A? Yeah. Yeah, because I, when I first came in 2015, yeah, this was the drum room yes. and uh, we treated it as such, but then we made some slight adjustments when, when it uh, got switched into a into Studio A, yeah. the, the control yeah. room A. Um, nice sneakers, by the way. Yeah, actually, <laughs> I found, I, you know, I found them, they're like the old Converse, yeah. you know? No, and awesome. I found them and I'm like, well, I, you know, and I ordered them in my size, so I could actually wear these if I wanted to, but there was just, is that how you get soul into your tracks? Oh, yes. Man, that's bad. I just thought, you know, there's little touches like, you know, the light switches and mm -hmm. outlets like a cassette and, you know, so. Yeah. Just little things around. What's your experience been like with, uh, after it's been uh, up and tuned? I know uh, some people from Dolby came out and. Yeah, well, I had a disaster. <laughs> so um, I've actually only mixed one song so far. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's been up for quite a while, but um, lightning struck and hit the JBL Intonato that's doing the uh, speaker management. And um, I actually had to send it back to them to get fixed. Got it back up and running. 
Um, so Dolby had come out, tuned my room, and I had four days of bliss. Yeah. And the lightning hit and all. Oh, man. And the big part is the EQ that Dolby does. The roll off is pretty severe. Mm -hmm. So just being in there and then he let me be his assistant, you know, yeah. the second time around. The first yeah. time he kind of con controlled it. And he goes, all right, all right, uh, turn it down. Like, and then it's going like, you know, yeah. turn it down like uh, 3dB, uh, you know, so, 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 so I turn it down and you could just literally hear it go like, yeah. you know, and so it was, it was fun doing that the second time. Yeah. I mean, I didn't. I don't. I don't recommend a second a second time around. Is, but yeah, probably not. Ideal. I don't recommend the lightning strike. But <laughs> this is fascinating to me. No, this is great, and um, you know, it's really you know, it's not a huge room, but it's it's big enough to to get good sounds out of. You got uh, great treatment in here. You know, four inch thick panels everywhere. Uh, you got some uh, Orlex T fusers back here as well. Yes, and uh, you know, some seating for people. Some there's some. Uh, you had a lot of these Orlex Leonard bass traps and, you know. I did from deal. like a long time ago. Yeah. And I figured, hey, it's not gonna hurt anything. And you've got, in this room, you've got the ATC speakers and yes. the Atom sub. Yes. And, uh, and uh, you got some of the yep. uh, Aventone speakers for, for uh, checking your mix as well. Yeah, I used to, I used to really rely on those. Um, but since I did, I went to the, you know, um, using the, um, Tonal balance, I don't really do much with it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I go, hey, here's what's gonna sound like in your car. Yeah. And people are like, oh, that's cool. And then if anybody wants it like stupid loud, <laughs> then I put it on the that's Eons. Totally. You've also got a, a Chernov uh, SD2 Pro in here as well, right? Yes, and that made a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna investigate that a little further, but yeah. it, for the most part, the line is completely straight, except for like one section between like 60, 70 hertz and 120 maybe. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's always a problem anyway. So. Yeah, small <laughs> rooms have, have and, that issue. So. And this is not, you know, a large room, so. Yeah, when I came here uh, before we even had the, the setup, we, we did some acoustical testing and, and we kind of wanted to see what the room was performing as is. We took all the panels down and, and we're uh, obviously any room that doesn't have proper acoustical treatment, there's gonna be peaks yeah. and dips in the frequency yeah. response and everything. And, and on that trip, I also remember uh, you had some interns here oh, yeah. and I, I got them to participate in the subwoofer crawl. Yeah. Oh, that was great. I thought you were messing with us, you know? <laughs> so I'm like, no, not on the ground. But that was interesting because, again, simple solution for a complicated problem. Right. So we took the sub, set it right here, firing to the wall. Mm -hmm. And we crawled around, uh, crawled around on the floor, yeah. you know, and put business cards down. And the fact, what, what, what just literally was fascinating to me was you'd, you'd crawl and you go, here, yeah. card, man, that sounds great and you do one more crawl, I can't hear it at all. Yeah. Then you go pounding, you know. Too much. No, 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 I mean, just totally like there and gone. Yeah. What? Yeah. You know, it was, that's. Yeah, that subwoofer crawl, we, really we use fun. it all the time. You know, yeah, you, yeah. you place a subwoofer at the mix position and uh, where your typically your ears would be, and then you crawl around on the floor and you're able to to really dial in because certain spots are gonna sound more consistent than others, and, and if you swap the subwoofer in your ears, it ends up translating. So it's much easier than trying to like, pick up the subwoofer, move it, come back and listen, pick it up again and move it, come back and listen. Exactly. Especially this thing. Yeah, yeah that thing's that. heavy, you know, and, and plus we only have about seven seconds of recall when it comes to discerning from one sound to the next and is so that long yeah, yeah <laughs> I, don't, I didn't even think it would be that long but yeah yeah so it's 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 a great method um we actually have a video on our our social media that yeah it's got like half a million views on facebook yes. just because of it's this we are method. not messing with you this is serious this actually works yeah. yeah it's an easy trick obviously you want to follow that up with testing and, and dialing things in and tuning but it's a great way to start at least yeah and and i would never where the speaker ended up i would never have thought Mm -hmm. to put it there. Yeah. And the other simple test was, uh, you know, we were worried about the subwoofer bothering um, other people. Neighbors, yeah. And uh, <laughs> your suggestion was, oh, like I'm going, we might have to like knock down the wall and put some extra stuff in it and da 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 da. Yeah. And uh, 
hey, just turn it up really loud and go over and see if you can hear it in your neighbors. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because that was like Genius. kind of the original plan was to potentially uh, tear down some of the walls, build it yeah. up, and, and uh, that was before I had gotten involved with the project. But yeah, yeah my, my thought was is that, um, you know, a real world test is always better. Yeah, you know? of course. Yeah, just of turn course. everything up as loud and go go to your, your neighbors and see if it's disturbing. Yeah, and I don't know if you ever got quotes for what it was going to cost, but I bet it was 50, 60 grand to do all the things that you'd need to do. So all total i spent ninety five thousand mm -hmm. dollars right and it would have been more than half of that just to change everything around all the construction well now it's time to take a look at the yeah let's look the, at the new toy room. the new yep. toy of the dolby atmos room shiny new toy so then this is the atmos room man so, and we, you know, just hang out and sit and whatever here. Uh, this room used to be something else. There was a mix, mix area back there and, yes. and a drum kit here, and then now it's transformed. So, well, and with this room, like we, we reused a lot of that treatment and you've yes. got, um, just had to purchase a couple other things. This yeah. uh, really nice here on the, the, the front wall, that yeah. whole, uh, you know, it's, it's really, really deep. Uh, it's probably, 18 to 24 inches deep of, of base trapping behind two, the, two the printed. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's a great like printed image to cover all that up. And it yes. just looks like a flat wall, but there's so much going on behind it. Plus your mini split system there yes. behind the behind the grill. And then my uh, my HVAC guy, he, um, he's like, well, you can't really put it. I was going to just put like a screen in front of it. He goes, oh, no, no. He goes, that thing will cycle and it'll never come out. Sure. I'm like, wait, it's a screen. Yeah. He goes, yeah, it'll never come through. So he built me a custom louver Great. thingy. Yeah, and then we also, you know, we had to uh, get your height channels, your your four height channels, uh, up in the air. And Higher. It yeah, and it wasn't something that we could do uh, from the ceiling because this is a drop tile ceiling here that yes. wasn't going to be able to support that extra weight potentially. Right. So uh, this great solution to have these trusses yes. uh, in here. And one thing we didn't want to do is hard mount the speakers to the truss so that the vibrations would enter into the truss. So we used the um, ISO Acoustics V120 mounts and they yeah, just and if work you notice, fantastic. If you, if you do one of these to the lights, yeah. do you see inside the, inside the clamp itself we mm -hmm. put rubberized pipe insulation yeah, yeah. Or whatever we put that in there before we clamped it down too yeah. so all those details matter you yes. know because you, you wouldn't ever want to have a situation where there's some sort of resonance or a rattle or some vibration that you can't track down so you did a great job with it it's and, fun and it's uh yeah. you know everything in here is within dolby specifications for yes. an atmos room and yes. and uh um, just really worked out nicely once uh, all this got put in uh it, it was something where uh, you know you had Dolby come out and tune it, and we got that all, all rolling, and, and, and then now it's, it's ready to go. What's people's uh, impression when they come in, like when they, they first uh, hear, some people probably first time they've heard Dolby Atmos before. Well, I called one of my friends, I'm like, yeah, dude, you gotta get over here. And he's a fantastic, and I mean, fantastic keyboard player, and he is a really, really good vocalist too. He came in here and cried. Yeah. And I won't mention his name because he's, you know, he's a tough guy. But, I, you know, I'm a tough guy. I played college football and, you know, all that. And and when I went to Blackbird, I heard um, uh, Rocket Man. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the original. Now you can play it off of um, here. And it's fairly close coming out, of, you know, but that's now not. I have a 9.1.4, so nine speakers around. The sub and four in the air, and they had a nine one six. Yeah. I, I heard this thing for the first time, and then there's some like synth stuff that comes in, and it, you don't really notice it in the two track. Yeah. And I turned to the guy who was you know giving me the demo, and I looked, and he goes, "Yeah, you never heard that in a song, did you?" Yeah. You know. And I'm literally like, goosebump fur, <laughs> and tears, instant yeah. like. You know, and I, you can't help it. It's yeah. just a body response. So I got it when he came in and cried. I'm like, hey, I told you. Because yeah. I told him I cried, you know. Yeah. And he's like, this is just is like listening to music for the first time. Yeah. And it, it is. is. Yeah. 
And we re reused these uh, four inch thick absorption panels that you had here. Did you rewrap them in different fabric? No. Or they, no, oh, they I, were I originally blue. bought them oh. in the dark blue because I couldn't get the light blue. Remember the, the, yeah, the that's in right. Studio A, there were light blue panels. Yeah. Um, but since I have dark and light in this, yeah, it all works. what I decided to do is paint the T fusers like light blue. Yeah. And then I have the light blue, dark blue, like it is in, in this um, photo. Yeah, yeah. And then I know above the drop tile ceiling, there's a bunch of insulation as well, so that- it, 10, in, 10 inches, I think we put up there. Yeah, yeah, so that, that helps with base trapping and as well. And each, each one is the size of the tile. Right, So right. you could just lift you it up lift and it up. get in there. And it's really nice too, because uh, you have a lot of volume in this room. Like it, it goes back for a long way. Yes. You've got some nice uh, couches, which also help with base trapping yeah. um, in the back, but it's a nice place for people to, to hang out because everyone wants to be in the control room at all times. Yeah, and, sure. and so it's, a, yeah, it's just super comfortable. I bet your clients love to, love to record. Oh yeah, we, 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 you know, we sit in here a lot, even if we're recording in Studio A. If you're an audio person, you know, and music has an impact on my body, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Yeah. And so that's another thing, like when I'm mixing, like when I have that feeling, it, only for me, then it's more excitement than than tears. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like it's like, ooh, yeah. I really got something, you know. But that body response is what you're looking for. That's, yeah. music is emotional. Yeah, and it's a, it's a combination of uh, obviously all these speakers and the spatial audio that you're getting with Dolby Atmos, but, um, having that in combination with a great room, it's, there's nothing right. like it. We're doing a lot of uh, Dolby Atmos rooms right now, probably 10 to 15 studios around wow. the country, and yeah. everybody is either going for it uh, full on or they're they're at least just wiring for it. You know, we're, we're running conduit in case they make the upgrade down the road, but I'm super excited for, you know, what this means for star sound and yeah, all yeah, the other things. Might have been Chris Lord Algy, who um, I went to one of his master classes, and he's like, well, he goes, you know, the artists are afraid and they're afraid because how Spotify loads the song and it might load the Atmos one. Sure. And if you went too far, people would be turned off. But yeah. I'm like, I don't know. I think yeah, it's there's cool. a there's an artistry to it, yeah, and and it's something yeah. where you don't want it to be too hokey. Like there's some effect yeah, that yeah. doesn't well, serve yeah. the song. Uh, but but I think that I know the care that you take with all of your music and your clients. Like you're gonna you're gonna get it right. Yeah, and I mix wide anyway. Mm -hmm. So and I mix by take this guitar and move it like there, and this one move it like that, so that you don't that you hear everything. Yeah, and. So this is just a bigger playground. It's great. That's awesome. You know, you can put anything anywhere. We went right past all of the gear uh, that you have, and I know that yeah. our audience will want to see that. So okay. do you mind uh, giving us a rundown no. of what you got? No, no, not at all. Yeah, yeah. So at the very, very top, those are um, the preamps. Um, they're the uh, ASP 800s and ASP 008s. Then below those are compressors and EQs, uh, DB, DBX, 560s and 530s. Everything that's recorded comes in the radials, which are um, sp three-way splitters. So everything comes in the back. That channel goes out two ways, up to on the audience, ASP 800, to compressor EQ, to a channel in Pro Tools, to the computer, right? Then the second split goes to the uh, Behringer X Air. That goes directly to the person. Everybody has their personal mixer. Of course, every mixing board has to have a way to go left, right, so you can hear it. So we have the summing in the Dangerous 2 bus. That has two identical outs. One goes straight, straight to the speakers, and I have a before. And then it goes to the Rupert Need 500 modules, EQ, tape emulation, and compressor, up to the black box, and then back in. So then that's my mastering side. And then I always have a before and after. I can click, click, click. That's basically the rig. And then um, I have a clock that has to clock both the interfaces and the, and the preamps, um, and the uh, turn off. <laughs> 
So what? Uh, let's talk a little bit about the Focal speakers. Like, what, what's your been yeah. your opinion of those? I mean, they just rip your head off. Yeah, we we uh, recently had a on our podcast. We had uh, Josh and Joao from Focal on there, and we do a lot of a lot of. Uh, projects with Focal speakers and they're just yeah. fantastic so I gotta get them to come here sometime man. yeah yeah next time they're in Take Cleveland a look. yeah man I, I'm so excited that you have this here you can be able to serve all your clients with Atmos in fact like no. I think this is some one of the uh, few if only one in this area and well definitely Cleveland yeah. and I don't I it seems like the state of Ohio because when you you know Google anything about mixing in Dolby it's it's me, you, you know. Up. Yeah. Well, thanks again for having us in. It's, oh, no, it's thank always you. good to be here. And uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was fun touring the space and, and uh, look forward to coming back another yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Thank, thank you, you, Wade. Appreciate it. Thank you.